scurrying across the sand. This flurry of hatchlings makes its way seaward. While in the trees, bird nesting season is underway. The wildlife haven of Heron Island is part of the Capricornia Cays on the southern Great Barrier Reef. This idyllic destination draws thousands of tourists each year to observe nature at its finest. Here you can just snorkel for hours and continually see new and exciting and, and good things. Um, and the reef is in such good condition up here that it's, it's really interesting to see all the different diversity of coral. Conservation is at the forefront for staff, tourists and researchers alike. But it hasn't always been this way. The first people who actually came to live on the island were here to build a turtle canning factory. So we have green and lower head turtles nesting on this island for thousands of years. In the past, uh, turtle meat was a delicacy. So people came here uh, at the beginning of the 1900s to build a turtle canning factory. Thousands of turtles were harvested and processed into soup for export. Turtle soup is, was a delicacy in England at that time uh, and probably other parts of Australia as well. It took less than a decade for the population to plummet and the business to collapse. Luckily, this didn't last very long. This is not sustainable. You cannot harvest turtles on a sustainable manner. It takes about 35 years for them to reach uh, maturity. So luckily, this only lasts a few years. If they had continued, they would have probably exterminated the entire population of turtles. The site then became a resort luring tourists from around the world with turtle riding. And the environmental hits for Heron Island kept coming. In 1945, the reef was blasted for low tide boat access. At that time, they dynamite this part of the reef to create the channel. Reprieve came in the 70s with the declaration of the Great Barrier Reef Marine Park but the park is still under threat. After escaping destruction in 2016 and 17, the Southern Great Barrier Reef suffered extensive mass bleaching for the first time in 2020. The latest bleaching event in March happened just days before a United Nations delegation arrived to assess the health of the Great Barrier Reef. It has been described as widespread in the far north and central sections of the reef. But the full extent of the damage has not been revealed. Around 27 kilometres from Heron Island lies Northwest Island, one of Australia's most significant seabird nesting sites. 100,000 shearwaters and 60 or 70,000 black noddies nest here every summer. So for Australia and, well, for the Great Barrier Reef, that makes up a, a large percentage of the seabirds that breed uh, in the Great Barrier Reef. Here, the native birds contend with introduced predators. When we looked into it further, we realised that, yes, globally, introduced rodents are having mass um, massive impact on seabird populations on these offshore islands. The Queensland Parks and Wildlife Service started removing mice in June 2020. We began an eradication program where we baited the whole island using helicopter aerial spreading and we did three runs at that. Um, after the second run we didn't detect any mice and we haven't detected any mice since. Almost two years on, rangers are yet to find a single mouse on Northwest Island. It's a promising sign for the abundant bird species and turtle hatchlings here on the Capricorn Caves. We are seeing increases in some species, uh, things like kingfishers, um, silver eyes, these smaller sort of birds. And we've still got to wait on a bit of trend data on the shearwaters and noddies to see if we've had an impact on their numbers. But yeah, it's looking positive so far. But another pest is booming on the Capricornia Caves. So the seagulls prey on the turtle hatchlings and also the seabird chicks. Now we think seagulls are a natural predator out here on the islands. They do have their place out here, but it's their sheer numbers which are becoming of concern. We have too many of them. Uh, the reason for that is us. 
Rangers say the widespread problem is caused by people feeding seagulls on the mainland. It's believed the extra food has increased their stamina, making offshore islands more accessible. Both here and back home, like, please don't feed the, the gulls. In the Capricornia case, it's a delicate balance between recreation, tourism, research and wildlife conservation. Maintaining it is at the heart of the work done by Indigenous land and sea rangers. While Heron Island proudly outlines its history, there is no acknowledgement of First Nations people. It is disappointing, but even since 2020 and since we've started, you can see the, um, the um, winds of change are upon us and, and we're starting to really, really take hold of it. The traditional owners of the region, the Port Curtis and Coral Coast Trust, were granted native title in 2018. Today, they work alongside park rangers from their patrol boat, the Guardian Warrior. We're here and we're going to make big waves, change the way people think, I guess, make sure that they know who we are and, and what we're about. Looking after the reef is their priority. Just as a custodian of the land, I just feel responsible for I care about it, you know, and I want to make sure it's healthy because it, it is our livelihood out here and it's so important to keep these reefs clean and good and, you know, stop, stop it from being overfished and, you know, over, overused and rubbished on. It's a passion shared by scientists at the island's renowned Coral Reef Research Station. Established in 1951, it was rebuilt in 2008 after a fire destroyed the original buildings. We can now house a bit over 140 researchers and education people, which makes us, you know, by far uh, the largest in the world, um, right on the, on the reef itself. The University of Queensland operation welcomes scientists and school groups from many different institutions. We have uh, other people looking at which animals eat cranathorn starfish larvae, the very, very small ones. We, we know a couple of the larger species that eat the larger animals, but we don't know really what eats the very, very small larvae. While the study is specific to the Capricorn case, the findings will be valuable in the Great Barrier Reef's fight against climate change for decades to come. One of the joys of things like marine science is that you, it's like a jigsaw, you know, you sort of make up all the parts. And so when you might not be familiar with some of the parts, but when you start to see them all together, you begin to realise you're seeing the whole picture. And that's really exciting. Cucumber. Katie Strang says the island's 100-year transformation from canning turtles to saving them shows it is possible to turn the tide on the impact of humans. The marine biologist hopes the natural beauty of the island and its wildlife will encourage guests to make changes in their own lives. We all have a role to play in protecting the marine environment and helping it in the future. So I'm a very, very big believer in conservation through education. It's the reason I do what I do. You don't need to be physically out there and in the environment trying to fix it. It's trying to then do all the preventative stuff that stops the problem in the first place. So stopping the marine debris going out there, stopping the chemical pollution, stopping um, all of that, or reducing our power usages to, to reduce climate change. It's all of those things that are actually gonna make more of a difference.